Hey everybody, after lunch crew. Hopefully you got some refreshments, you're feeling refreshed and not too sleepy. Uh, the talk I'm giving today is called Still Excited About Drupal and Why You Should Be Too. Feel free to ask questions as we kind of go along. Uh, my name is Lerone Walker, I'm a senior director at an agency called Bounteous and you can find me pretty much everywhere on the internet. If Lerone Walker is there, it's probably me. So hopefully you don't hate me because uh, if that's true, it's probably the same with Ron Walker. Uh, just a little bit about Bounties, if you haven't heard about us or what we do. Um, we have about 11 locations kind of spread all over the world and a lot of remote folks, especially, you know, coming out of COVID. Uh, we're about 1,700 strong and growing. Um, there's lots of accolades up here. I won't go through everything, but uh, the thing that uh, is always fun to talk about is, you know, some of the clients that we get to work with. I don't know if anybody's from this area. Yeah. So we're Wawa's digital agency, which if you don't know Wawa, it's a really fun brand to work with because you know people get Wawa tattoos and they call and say, hey, I want to get married at a Wawa. Like, can you hook that up? And we're like, uh, sure, we'll figure it out. It's, it's a lot of fun. And I won't go through all these, just some other fun stories. We built the Domino Pizza Tracker and some other fun things there. But um, let's talk a little bit more about Drupal. So, when you're signing up for these talks, I don't know why I'm looking around the whole room like I should just focus on who's here, right? <laughs> when you're signing up for these talks, they have like this little checkbox that says like, who's this for? Who's the audience for it? And I feel like sometimes when people click everyone, that's, it almost seems like, well, that's the lazy way out because then you didn't have to think critically about who this is actually for. But uh, I'm hoping that through this we'll talk for anybody who's maybe new to Drupal, uh, anyone who's seasoned, and we'll say seasoned is anyone who's had more than just a little bit of Drupal time. And then if you're evaluating Drupal, so maybe you're not hands-on, maybe you're not part of an agency or a consultant, and maybe you're uh, in-house and you're either looking at Drupal or you're considering um, a move to Drupal, uh, there's a little bit of something for everyone. I think it's always fun in these conversations to talk about our backstories and where we came from. That's one of the things I love doing the most. When I meet new people, I go, where are you from? How'd you get into tech? You know, what drew you to Drupal? Uh, my start in technology actually started through music. In uh, junior high, high school, and college, I played in a lot of bands, mostly metal and hardcore bands, which uh, was always shocking, I think, to anybody who came across me, and mostly my parents. Um, and I promise there's a connection here to Drupal. Uh, but for a long time, music was everything for me. That was my outlet. That's where I poured all my energy. I had no idea what technology was. I spent all my time playing music with my friends and playing shows on the weekend. And then one day, this site popped up. I don't know if anybody remembers what this is. Yep, some thumbs up. MySpace. Uh, so the way it used to work was, you know, if you were an up and coming band, and I don't mean to say that anything we're doing was up and coming, but in our minds, we're up and coming. You would have to burn these CDs, so I'd go to Best Buy and get a bunch of CDRs, and then we'd you know, burn demos and try to hand them out, and then if you had shows coming up, you'd have to kind of figure out how do you get the message out to your friends because we didn't have a website, we didn't even know how to do any of that. Then when MySpace started, we were like, hey, maybe there's something here. And then they launched something called MySpace Music. And so what we were able to do is say, instead of you know, relying on word of mouth or passing out demos one by one, we could sign up for one of these pages on MySpace, we could upload all of our music, we could say when our new shows are coming out, we could share news, we can you know, have the, this interactions with, I'm gonna say the word fans, and that is extremely generous. They were not fans. They were like our siblings and our our parents, really. I mean, <laughs> there wasn't much of a, a fan base there. Um, but what this led to was we started doing, not for Jay-Z to be specific, but we started doing this for our band. And then the bands that we were playing with were saying, hey, you guys did this. How did you do it for us? And so my love for music started turning into, well, maybe on the side I can do these custom MySpace pages and make a little money for, you know, for other bands. And what that led to was those bands would talk to other bands, and those bands would talk to their parents, and their parents would say, hey, that guy that was doing your MySpace page, can you help me with my website? And that's really how technology was even introduced to me. Again, it wasn't on my radar. It wasn't something I was planning to go to school for or anything. It just kind of fell into this through MySpace, which is, uh, I think, one of the most bizarre stories I've heard. So this is Young Me in 2004. I got my business license. Uh, I bought this book here, or this binder. If you can't read that for you, Mark, it's the Web Design Business Kit. And uh, I bought it from SitePoint.com, which used to be a thing. I don't know if it still is. 
Um, and why that was cool, and I promise we will get to Drupal things, but I think all of this is probably necessary to you know, kind of paint the full picture, uh, is if you knew nothing about consulting or running a business or working in web, this book had like sample email templates, it had sample contracts, um, it had things that you should and shouldn't do, ways to register your business and do it legitimately. So uh, I took my wallet, which I'm holding, and it's probably empty, made that purchase, and I was off to the races and started freelancing uh, because of a little thing called MySpace. And I'd like to say that it was all roses, and I just dove right into Drupal, and it was amazing, and then all these things happened, and I got to work with these amazing clients, but the reality is, is there was a lot of years of frustration. Uh, there were so many options on the market. Again, I was not classically trained. I kind of fell into this through MySpace, of all things, and so I didn't know, once you go beyond MySpace, what do you use? What should I spend my time learning? What should I invest my hours in? What should I recommend when people say, hey, I wanted to use a CMS. I, said, I don't even know what that is. I'm still working with just pure HTML and CSS. And uh, I don't know the, the background of the, the people here in the room, but has anybody tried to create their own CMS? Maybe it's something? Yeah, that's humbling. <laughs> Uh, super humbling, uh, and I went through a little bit of that as well. And so, all that led me to Drupal. Um, kind of looking at a list similar to the image that we just showed. Uh, I saw that drop and said, what is that? I don't know what it is, but it's free. And I'm new to this, let me dive in. And so, uh, before D6 was released, or I think it was in beta when I started you know, kind of getting a hold of things, um, I spent every night, every weekend, just kind of pouring into Drupal, scouring forums. There was no Slack, there was no uh, real amazing resources, but just trying to immerse myself in like, what is this free tool and can I use it to move beyond MySpace, move beyond HTML and CSS? And uh, again, this is D6 days, so this is like CCK, hello. Um, but what I quickly realized is you could, if you understood the data modeling and if you understood the basics, that you could use this platform, you could use this framework to build just about anything. And so I quickly went from building you know, simple brochureware sites to really anybody came up to me, I was like, yeah, I could do that. I didn't really know how to do it, but I knew that through Drupal, I could figure it out. And fast forward 18 years or so uh, from my MySpace days, it's amazing to see how far technology has come. It's amazing to see how much the Drupal platform has grown, to see the community, to see everything that we're doing, to see the logos that are associated with Drupal. Um, and I think some of the things that excite me today about the Drupal community and about Drupal were the, the same things that excited me back in early 2000, which is very cool. So why am I still excited about Drupal 18-ish years later? So I don't know, again, if you know much about Bounties, but uh, we love to share. We have a really big culture on learning and sharing what we know. And yes, we do have some you know, kind of secret sauce things that we kind of keep under wraps, but overall, when we experience something new and we work on a project that we think is really interesting, we try to put that out there. And uh, so if you haven't been to the Bounties blog, and I promise this isn't just a, a Bounties promo, there's a lot, this will all kind of come together as we keep talking about this. Um, we get, I think, north of two million page views a year, and we use this space really to educate, but one nice byproduct, byproduct of that is we also get a lot of business from people who are wondering, you know, how do I do? Maybe you're wondering, let's say, upgrading your site to Drupal 9 if you're on D7. I know there have been a few D7 talks, and the one with Adam Bernstein was talking about, what, 59% of uh, Drupal sites out there are still on D7. Uh, uh, what's coming in D10? So we try to write about topics that we think are interesting, but also the, our learnings that our team has, has found, and we want to kind of put it out for the whole community. And I think another cool byproduct is, speaking of the community, is we've seen people come to Bounties and want to work here. Uh, because of the articles they're reading, we just, I just heard this week that uh, there's an article there about your technical guide to Triple Code reviews. A developer at another agency read that and said, wow, I wish we were doing that. Do you have any job openings? And it turned out we did, and now we're having that conversation to you know, hopefully bring them on board. I'm excited about Drupal because of speaking. Uh, so DrupalCon, which is, Pretty cool is this gentleman here in the, in the back. The only reason I know about uh, this camp is because of Drupal, going to DrupalCon, having lunch with you, and you saying, Drupal Camp New Jersey is the best camp. And I was like, ah, it's not even on my radar. And you pumped it up so much that that's what originally put it on my radar. Well, is that, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> 
Uh, but I love stories like that, and I love having opportunities to, to be in environments like this and share. And uh, this is some of the team uh, that was at DrupalCon, uh, what, a month or so ago. And what's also interesting about this is only one person from this picture had actually met in person prior to you know, a few weeks ago because of COVID. So this was also a nice way to kind of connect everybody and bring us all together. And I, I won't read through this list on the left, but uh, in addition to writing and trying to share and grow the community that way, speaking about what we know, speaking about our experiences is, is huge. And that may feel like a small thing, but hopefully you'll start to see as I continue to go through this that there are businesses that are excited about Drupal, the platform, but it's so much more than that. It's really about the community, our uh, love of sharing, educating others, and bringing others alongside us. Um, this gentleman in the middle, just a quick aside. So this is Chris Greetens. He is the practice lead uh, for Drupal at Bounties, and uh, he actually does a session on magic at DrupalCon, which is pretty cool. Uh, so talk about, I think, they actually may be good for uh, second session after lunch to mix it up and do something like that, but unfortunately I'm a poor magician, so uh, you guys are stuck with me. Uh, contributing uh, gets me super, super pumped. Uh, you may have heard the story before. We had a few of our folks talk about this at DrupalCon a couple years back. Uh, the Better Mega Menu, also known as TV Mega Menu, was a module that was out there. Um, and as the name probably describes, if you don't know what it is, it allows you to create mega menus on your Drupal site. Uh, lots of conversation on whether or not the better mega menu is a great name or not, but we inherited this model, so don't come after us. Um, but essentially, we saw that this was abandoned, and it was something that we were using for some of our sites. And then we saw an opportunity that, hey, we're already writing about what we do in the community and what we do with Drupal and the things we're learning. We're already speaking about it. How do we get more hands-on and so this is an opportunity where a couple of our developers said, hey, let's rescue this module. Let's bring it under our wing. Let's pour some resources into it. Get, um, get all the security updates <laughs> that we're lingering. You know, go to the issue queue and try to tackle some of those items there and kind of bring it up to speed. And what this has done and, and why it's even worth bringing it up is not to pat ourselves on the back and say, hey, you know, we, we rescued this module. Uh, but really, this has created an opportunity for people who are new to Bounties, developers that are new to Bounties. There's that that period where you're new to an organization and you're onboarding and you're not quite on projects yet and you may have a little bit of downtime. This is something that they can easily slip into, knock off a few issues, get to meet the rest of the team before you get put on projects. And even if you're between projects and you have an hour or two here, um, you can easily jump into this. And so this has turned into like a nice way to say like, hey, I have a little bit of time. Let me jump into the SUQ. Let me help make this module better. And I think they're working on some enhancements for a, a, a complete rewrite because um, I'm sure our front-end developers wouldn't mind me saying they're not a big fan of the, the current markup that's there. We're working on it. So if you use it, again, don't come after me. We rescued it, and we're hoping to continue to make it better. So uh, if you haven't heard, and I know this is the second time I'm bringing it up, but uh, Adam Bernstein had a really great talk earlier today uh, about comparing Drupal and to other platforms kind of in our ecosystem, the WordPress of the world and Zoom, Joomla's and uh, PATH, uh, platform as a service offerings, PATH and SaaS offerings. And it, what was really unique about it is there was a question, I think, at the end about um, who's coming to Drupal? Like, are there new developers coming? Is it just kind of We'll say the old guard who's just you know has been along for this ride for a long time, and what are the we doing to get younger and fresh faces onto the platform? Uh, I know that this isn't the only organization that does this, but uh, this past year or so, we partnered with an organization called Drupal Easy, and they offer a 12-week boot camp that takes people who know nothing about Drupal. It's an intense, you know, kind of 12-week course, and at the end of it, people are ready to, you know, kind of find their first jobs, uh, a lot of times in technology for the first time. And there's a few things that I think uh, are really, really cool about this initiative. Uh, one, we are offering scholarships so that people who aren't in tech and who are interested in getting involved in tech can be a part of this and, and learn Drupal. Um, <clears throat> a lot of organizations have diversity and inclusion initiatives, and one of the things that we're trying to use this for also is looking for um, audiences that may not have the same pathways to tech or are coming from kind of unconventional backgrounds. Um, and I don't need to go through all the studies. You've probably read them of uh, having a diverse workforce, what that does to organizations and the productivity gains. And um, notwithstanding, like, it's also the right thing to do. 
Uh, but this is a great way where we're not having to take people who maybe aren't the best at showing somebody how to use Drupal from kind of nothing to you're fully hireable to partner with organizations that already do this really, really well and bring developers under our wings. Uh, there's a developer that we actually just brought on. I didn't ask her before this talk, so I won't mention her by name. Uh, but she went through this program. She came into our, our, our organization as an apprentice, which is like our internship, and is now working full time. She's working on certifications. She's on client projects, and she's killing it. And really, it's through this partnership with Drupal Easy. I want to say Evolving Web is here, and I saw that they have a training program too. Um, I don't know what the negatives. Well, I'd shout them out, but. Uh, I know this isn't the only path forward, but it's really, really awesome that there are so many opportunities here for developers trying to get involved and bringing people to full-time employees. Strategic initiatives is uh, another big thing, and I know this is evolving, and you know, kind of after the, the Dries notes that uh, the, this list gets updated, but this has been another great way for our teams to get involved, and something that's really exciting to me, and uh, why I bring this up is uh, we have people on our team that say, hey, Loren, it's awesome that we can write and that gets you excited, but I'm not a writer. It's awesome that we have opportunities to speak, but I hate public speaking. I hate getting in front of people. It's awesome that we have this module that you're maintaining, but you know, module maintain maintenance isn't really my jam. Uh, these strategic initiatives is another really great way to get involved in the community and something that's really exciting because anybody can be involved. So what I mean by that is uh, there are a lot of times they have these um, async meetings where you can join over Slack. You don't have to be a developer. Ooh, that just got loud. Sorry about that. You don't have to be a developer being involved. All you have to do is be interested. And this has been a great way for us to get people who maybe are either new to development and working on a module maybe, a, maybe above what they're willing to do right now and still um, have them involved in the community, getting to meet people who are involved in the Drupal community and also pushing these initiatives forward, which is, equally as exciting. So I know, for example, the, uh, some of the front end theme work, we had a few folks that are really passionate about accessibility. And they were like, I don't know where I fit in this whole thing. I don't know, the module that we're working on, there are no accessibility needs. I'm not gonna write about it. I've already written about it. I've already spoken about it. Uh, but getting involved in kind of auditing uh, the new front end theme was a great way for them to still be part of the community and be, do something that they're passionate about. Certifications. Why put certifications up here? Lorena, are you really excited about certifications? <laughs> uh, I will for, and this is why, and uh, unlike some other platforms, so one thing that's interesting about uh, Bounty is, is, yes, we do Drupal work, but we, we deal with a lot of platforms. And so we're used to being in the same room where people are asking us, do we go with your Salesforce team, or your Drupal team, or your AEM team, or your Sitecore team? Like, Really, we have a conversation to figure out what's the best platform and then we decide uh, kind of from there. Um, but when you're looking at Drupal, if you are a Drupal developer and you're either looking at new opportunities or you have a prospect that's coming to you and saying, hey, how do I know that you know your stuff? I see your portfolio, I see your references, but your developers, the people who are touching my code, how do I know that they know what they're doing? Uh, these certifications which uh, Aqua currently runs is, uh, in our opinion, a fantastic way to answer that question. Um, and I mentioned here, it's, a f I think, the only formal certification that we have as Drupal developers, uh, which is fantastic. And it also validates your skills as a developer, too, because they are written in a way that, uh, assuming that you have hands-on experience with the platform. So they intentionally create these tests so that you can't just, you know, read a, a blog post, cram, and then take it, and then somebody finds out that you're good at uh, recalling what was on the blog post, but you've never touched Drupal before. They tend to try to you know, write it so that you can get around that. So you can't get around that. Um, visibility in the marketplace is huge. Uh, I, normally, if this were like a, a non-camp thing and we were talking about bounties, we talk about certifications. Our practice has over 100 of them. And that's really powerful when we walk into a room and somebody says, we like bounties, but what really separates you? How do I know that you know your stuff outside of the client list and everything else? We can point to this. And for developers, uh, this is great because it goes with you. And uh, what I mean by that is, if all of our Drupal developers left tomorrow, all the certifications go with them to their new organization. So this is, uh, for the individual, this is a great move um, because these are accolades that you know, you'll be able to keep forever. I uh, didn't have this in the notes, but I'll also say, I know some other platforms, and I won't name names, their certifications expire, whereas these you don't have to renew yearly, which I think is another, another big thing. Again, 
Most of what I talked about has nothing to do with Drupal the platform. It's the community, it's about sharing, it's about getting our expertise out there, it's about learning together, it's about bringing people from diverse backgrounds who don't have access to technology kind of into the fold. Um, but also Drupal 10, you know, uh, most of us at this point, we've probably have seen Andrew's notes, so we won't go into detail about you know, all these steps, but uh, why is it so important that Claro is up there? Why is it so important that we make Elevero stable and the uh, improvements to layout builder media improvements? Uh, I mentioned that we get to deal with a lot of platforms, and one of the things that's always been a challenge when people see Drupal for the first time is they look at it and go, oh, that's it? And we're like, oh, it's super powerful, we have data modeling, it's super secure, the open source, blah, blah, blah. You, go, you kind of go through the punch list of features, and the first impression, because we deal a lot of, with marketing teams, is they see the interface uh, either on the front end or on the back end, and they're, they're not impressed. And so I think that uh, while it may not seem like a big deal, and maybe this room is like, no, this is a big deal, we agree, why are you belaboring this point? I think this is huge for the, the types of clients that we uh, typically encounter, and people who are new to the platform. And other things too, again, we won't get into detail of the theme starter kit, and uh, shouting out Adam again, he touched a little bit about that on his talk, about just having a better uh, theming experience that kind of mirrors other platforms like the WordPresses of the world that are more consumer friendly out of the box. So this may not apply to all organizations, but um, at Banish we talked a lot about Drupal being future ready. And we talk, and maybe this is true for a lot of organizations, we spend a lot less time talking about, you know, we're building you a site, but more we're building you a platform that will grow with you and uh, that will change and evolve with you. And that's been a really powerful message even through COVID, uh, not knowing that that was you know, gonna happen. Uh, clients that had to pivot very quickly and features that we had to add to their platforms and, and functionality that they didn't need two years ago that all of a sudden they needed now that everyone was home, um, we were able to move pretty quickly in Drupal. Uh, underneath I have a couple of points here that I'll highlight here in a, a couple of slides about uh, future ready, specifically speaking to the ability to go coupled, partially decoupled, headless, or composable. Um, I'm not sure about this audience familiarity with a lot of these terms, but uh, we like to talk about uh, three ways to really approach Drupal sites and that uh, those things are on a spectrum. Whoa, let's go back here. Uh, kind of starting on the left hand side, we have a fully decoupled experience, fully coupled experience, which is like traditional Drupal. Drupal's the back end, Drupal's the front end. You're you know working with the theming layer with twig files. Not sure why that keeps on changing. Stop that. Uh, on the other side of the spectrum, you know, Drupal is the back end typically, but then the front end is completely removed from the theming layer. So that's where that, that front end experience is powered by React or Angular or Vue. You know, it's this this headless UI. And then in the middle is partially decoupled, which is kind of the uh, mix of both worlds, where you know some features are you know, coming from pure Drupal, other pieces of the experience might be headless. And we do this actually a lot on the, the bounty site. Some of the um, like blog pages and, and things that are more just you know kind of basic content areas are fully coupled, whereas some of the more interactive animated pieces. Uh, that our design team wanted to have more control over and that we knew our marketing team wasn't going to update often is partially decoupled. Um, we're working on some pretty cool stuff and I can't name names yet, but um, some big orgs with improving the headless experience with Drupal and I believe that that will be out next month. So maybe that will be another talk as some of the ways we partnered with some of the or other organizations to improve uh, Drupal's headless experience out of the box. These next couple slides here. Um, composable is uh, big, and I don't know how much this is coming up. Yeah? That word is everywhere now. Yeah. I almost feel like uh, it's being used like back in the day like when Ajax was a yeah. thing. It was like, hey, I think it's Ajax. Uh, I almost just named the name, but uh, we used to have an executive at another company that um, wasn't technical, but would latch on the buzzwords like that. And when Ajax came out, he's like, is it Ajax? We're like, no, it's, it's an email. <laughs> How do we make an Ajax? Uh, great guy. Uh, I stole uh, a lot of this, the next couple slides from uh, Mark and Phil, who's on our team, and is, um, he leads this composable practice at Bounty. He's a really, really smart guy. Um, but he always mentions that composable equals business agility. And uh, he's presented to our Drupal practice uh, a couple weeks ago 
And he mentioned that there are projects now that we're getting in that instead of this being, hey, we need Drupal as a CMS and we are going and we're building those projects, they say, hey, Valus, we have 40 platforms. We have three CMSs. We have four uh, commerce solutions. We have two A-B testing solutions. We have personalization engine over here. It's like this hodgepodge of all these MarTech platforms. And they want to know, like, what do we need to remove? What can we streamline? What needs to stay? Um, what is duplicative as far as features and functionality? And how can you help us shape what this looks like? Uh, it's a really interesting position for us as uh, the Drupal community to be in because a lot of platforms that are kind of in this mix uh, aren't API first. They're not open source. Uh, there's a lot of licensing fees that kind of go along that may impact some of the decision about what stage it goes. And I think having a platform that can easily fit into one of these boxes and power, you know, desktop, mobile, chat, mobile app, email, um, is really, really powerful. And so we approach these conversations around with Composable with, uh, yes, we have Drupal expertise, yes, we have expertise in other platforms, but uh, Clean Slate, if you had a solution that was front-end agnostic, back-end agnostic, and vendor agnostic, what is the right mix? And that's been really powerful because we can literally say, all right, if Drupal is your API first, super powerful, amazing data modeling, super secure platform that sits here, what is the best asset management system? What is the best search solution? Not solar in Drupal? Awesome. Let's pull in something else that really, really works for you. Personalization engine? You don't like this one? Awesome. Let's find the one that works perfectly for you. This commerce piece has features that you really like, but not everything? Great. Either we switch out that solution or you have two commerce engines that are kind of powering different pieces of the experience. And you can get really complex or you know, as um, simple as you want with these configurations. And we're just doing a lot of really interesting work there. And I think that Drupal is um, uniquely positioned to, to be part of these conversations. So that was a lot. <laughs> so wrapping up here, why should you be excited about Drupal? So back to this persona is kind of in the beginning. Uh, if you're new to Drupal, and I don't, that may not apply to this room here, uh, but there are um, multiple boot camp options specific to Drupal organizations that will fund that training or at least uh, provide some assistance there through scholarships um, or opportunities after you graduate, which is really exciting. I wish I had that back in my MySpace days when I was kind of banging my head against the, uh, the desk. Uh, training opportunities through Drupal camps and cons. Again, this is my first time at this camp, but someone was telling me at lunch that they used to have a training day. Yeah. 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 It used to be a three-day thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Even better. But imagine if, this, if you're new to Drupal and coming to an event like this and being able to sit in sessions but also get hands-on training is, is really, really huge. Uh, we already mentioned practice programs, Drupal initiatives to make the experience better. And we didn't go through all those initiatives, but like easy out of the box, that new front-end theme. Project Browser, all these things are to make the experience of using Drupal easier for people who are exposed to it for the first time, which is a win for all of us. And obviously the amazing community that's there and willing to help. For you seasoned users, all the things that got me excited in the beginning of the talk, educating through blogs and talks and mentoring. Um, Drupal Camp Florida, I don't know if anybody's been to that, but apparently they've had a huge push and a huge, um, uh, Amy June, if you're familiar with her, uh, has been gave a talk about mentoring, and it's like a bunch of our people came back and uh, we just want to mentor people. And so we had somebody at TripleCon this year and just came and mentored and I think got a free ticket. Not that you need incentive to men mentor, but, um, and we have people who are just passionate about like, hey, I'm really great at what I do. I love developing, but I, instead of writing or blogging or all those other things, I just want to mentor other people. Oh, is that my, <laughs> is that my warning light? <laughs> Sorry, we're almost done here. Um, strategic initiatives, you mentioned that kind of on the other slide. Build up credibility with their certifications. Again, you can take this with you. And then bonus plug, uh, if you're not part of the Drupal Association, uh, I would definitely consider becoming a member. And last but not least, if you're evaluating Drupal, it's still open source and free to use, which again, for a lot of platforms that we deal with, that's not the case. And being, I remember again being new to Drupal and having the ability to download the platform without licensing that didn't change it to a paid model after 30 days or anything like that. That's, that's a really, really powerful um, kind of feather in our cap 
Um, continuous innovation model has been really big for a lot of the products that we've been selling. Once, hey, once you're off with D7, your major updates are going to be like minor updates. That's a really, really easy sell for you know, kind of the higher ups. Uh, we talk about being API first and having uh, Drupal play well with those other systems. You don't like parts of Drupal, that's fine. We can bring whatever platform, as long as it has an API and interact with it, no problem. And we talk about those different approaches. You can be couple, partially decoupled, or headless. Uh, it really doesn't matter. We can, with the right partner, uh, create a solution that's tailor-made for you. And then, as we all know, we can build in on a scalable platform that will flex with your needs. So again, thank you for joining the after lunch hour <laughs> and deal with our, our microphone issues in the beginning. But uh, that's all I had for this. Again, Lorraine Walker at Bounteous. You can find me at Lorraine Walker everywhere. Small plug, uh, we are continuing to grow um, in our triple practice and elsewhere. So if you are interested, uh, definitely hit up our career page. Thanks so much. Okay. What's the fee of Drupal Easy? What's the fee? Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know offhand, but I can get that for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Um, um, it's all in person, or is it I believe so. I think they have a couple of models here. I, I can look it up. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say because I think they're based in Florida, and I know that the last person that went through it is not in Florida. So I'm going to say that they definitely have a. What, the Drew Lazy? Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's Drew Career Online. Right. Oh, it's in the title. You're absolutely right. The common sense reigns true again. Um, yeah, but this is, uh, again, we have the people who can train, but you know, as an agency year who builds hourly, you have to make a decision of, like, do we create a program and try to do this from scratch, or do we allow the people who do this all day, every day? Um, and it's, I think, a smart decision to have uh, people who know what they're doing and do this all the time, kind of handle like, the, the, the basics, and then they can come in to our walls and we can show them, like, and here's what it means here at Bounties, here's how our team does this. Here's how you get practical with that experience. That's, that's really cool. And, um, not to continue to talk about Drupal careers online, but the developer that uh, just came through that, like, she is like, new, new to tech, new, new to Drupal, and is already working on client stuff, which is, I think says a lot about their program. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Enjoy the rest of the camp. <laughs>